So in today's video, I am showing you how I highline my horse fame. When we go horse camping, all by myself, without using any special knots, and I do it in less than 10 minutes. So here's what you'll need. I've included links in the description below of everything that I'm using today. The first thing you'll need are tree straps. You will damage the tree if you just use rope. And this one is actually eight feet long. It's really heavy duty. It's actually a little bit overkill, um, but I like it because I found that if I just tried to use old cinches, which is a very popular strategy, um, I don't have enough length. And so I definitely recommend getting something that's long, like eight feet. These are picket line ties, and you'll see they have a nice little swivel at the bottom. You can connect your horse directly to these, but I actually like using them as stoppers on either end and connecting my horse to the black swivel so that he can go back and forth on the line. I use these so much. They come in chrome and stainless steel, and you'll actually connect this to that black swivel, and then your horse's rope will go through the blocker tie ring. This is the secret weapon. This is what allows you to not have to tie any special knots at either end where the trees are. You'll put a rope through the pulley there, and then you'll attach that hook to your tree straps. I actually use two of them, one on each end, but you could just secure one end of your rope with an eyelet and just use one ratchet. I recommend 100 feet of high quality polypropylene rope. This is half inch rope to match my half inch ratchet. And don't forget a sturdy step stool. You're definitely gonna need this so that you can get your tree straps high enough up on the tree. So for this demonstration, I'm picking a spot at my local park here using my trailer and a single tree. Ideally, you wanna pick a spot that is clean and wide enough for your horse to have some room to move around and a tree that is sturdy enough, high up enough that you can get that high line above your horse's head. So the first thing you wanna do is put the rope into the rope ratchet following the direction of the arrows on the ratchet. This is going to be the hardest part of the whole process and I recommend actually getting this prepared before you leave. Um, once you do this the first time, you won't ever have to do it again. You can just pack everything up in your bag already assembled. But this part's a little bit of a pain, just feeding the rope through. I find that once you finally crank that puppy through, attaching the hook to the toe of your boot to pull on that last little bit of rope that's coming out is the easiest way to get your rope ratchet started. Then you want to slide the black swivel that your horse is going to be connected to onto the rope before you put on the second rope ratchet. If you are using just one rope ratchet, make sure that you put this on before you put the rope through your ratchet. While you will probably do a little bit of adjusting as you tighten this, you do want to try and get that first tree strap up as high as you can. And then recognize because you won't have much tension on that first tree strap that you want to kind of position that hook so it will hold onto the strap and not come off. So in instances where I have not had two trees close enough together, I've actually been able to use my trailer and I just drop down that window and attach the hook to the loop that's welded in place to tie your horse to. It's definitely not as ideal as using two trees. I would use your discretion as to whether your trailer can handle this sort of thing. You definitely wanna make sure that that hook is really firmly secure and not going to pop off. Once you've secured your two attachment points, you can start cranking on that rope. It's a very satisfying sound. You just wanna make sure that you don't pull it too tight because we still have to attach these guys. I find the easiest thing is to just pinch the rope through the front and then pull down and around the bottom. I like to position these guys at least three feet in from my trees because they act as stoppers so that your horse can't walk too far to the end and potentially get themselves wrapped around the tree or caught up in the excess rope. You can also anchor your horse to that bottom swivel instead of giving them a length of rope to run back and forth on. Um, this is a great option if you've got multiple horses on a single high line and your high line isn't very long. It prevents them from getting tangled up in each other and getting into each other's food. Um, but I like to use these as stoppers on either end. This is also the time that you'll want to adjust the height of your high line and okay. scooch those tree straps up and make sure those hooks are firmly attached around both ends of the strap before you start cranking on that thing and pulling it tight. And don't forget to tie up your excess rope so that it's out of the way so that your horse can't get tangled up in it. Now you're gonna attach your carabiner to your blocker tie ring to the swivel. Now, if you forgot to put the swivel on first, you don't necessarily have to take your line down. This is a workaround that I did at my last camping trip because I had an extra orange tie ring that I flipped upside down. 
um, but I definitely recommend making sure at least one of your components swivels so that your horse's line isn't getting tangled up as they turn around. And then you will put your horse's lead rope through the blocker tie ring. If you aren't familiar with blocker tie rings, the reason why I use them is because they create enough tension to hold your horse in place. Um, but if your horse spooks or pulls back really hard, rather than the knot getting tighter, it will actually let them out very slowly and gently. And I find it to be a really safe option. Definitely keep in mind though, that it really works best with these polypropylene lead ropes and not cotton lead ropes. And then you wanna test the length of your horse's lead rope. You want it long enough that they can eat and drink normally, uh, but you also don't want too much excess. As you can see, the line has a lot of flex to it. And so you wanna take that into account when you are adjusting that length. And some people actually like to shorten their horse's lead rope at night to prevent them from potentially getting tangled up while they're asleep. Um, I've never had this issue with Fame. He seems to be very calm on the high line. So take your own horse's needs and behavior into account as you're making these adjustments. I should also point out that this high line is actually a little on the low side. I was just working with the situation that we had here at the park and we're up on a curb. Um, and I would say that is one of the downsides of using your trailer is that one end of your high line is going to be an unadjustable point that's usually a little on the low side. Um, Fame is 16 two hands, so he's a tall guy. Um, and ideally I like to have that high line above his ears. Um, here's another example from Point Reyes where they actually have two high line poles that were a really nice height for him above his head. You'll want to periodically adjust the tension on your high line just simply because the horse pulling on it and the stretching of the rope will cause it to sag. So plan to do that several times throughout your trip to increase the tension. I also think it's super important to make sure you've got a knife either on your person or stowed near the high line because stuff does happen. Sometimes horses can get themselves tangled up and in an emergency, you wanna be able to cut your horse free. And when it comes time to take your high line down, you'll just wanna push up on that lever and that will release the tension on the rope. Uh, just be careful when you do that initially the first time because there will be a lot of pressure on your rope and it'll take a little bit of force to push on that lever. And then I like to keep my high line kit mostly intact so that I can just throw it up as soon as I get to the campsite and spend the majority of my time riding or relaxing. If you're thinking about using highlining on your next trip, I would definitely test your horse in advance with it. Um, there's no perfect way to secure your horse. A lot of people feel that highlining is one of the safer options out there, but it does come with potential drawbacks and it really kind of depends on your horse. Um, so definitely do some tests first. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about highlining down in the comments below. If you're interested in any of the products I've used, I've included links down in the description. And you can see me using this exact setup in action on our latest horse camping trip right here.